Guys, before I begin, if you end up hearing any Christmas music while this video happens, the people next door are playing Christmas tunes all day, and I can't get them to stop. Okay, so hello, hello guys, welcome, or if you've already seen my channel before, welcome back. I am the Philadelphia Hoovian, and for this video, we're going to be doing something I never, I don't think I ever talked about before. If I have, correct me, what can I do? So we're talking about the 13th Doctor and what I would do if I was in a, situ in a situation, sorry, I'll repeat that, in a situation where I had to write for a female doctor. What I would have done if I was faced with that challenge of writing for a whole season for a female doctor, how would I do what I do if I was the head writer and what I was doing, sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied, I'm sorry guys, start over, take two. What I would do if I had to write for a doctor who is made to a female, as it is for the 13th Doctor, how would I approach it? Okay, I've written the 13th Doctor before in fan fiction when I was do working with all doctors at one time, and of course, naturally, she should be included. But, for those of you guys who have not watched my channel before, I admit to having a slight discomfort with the idea of the 13th Doctor. I've had a whole journey with that. But so, then I thought about it, I said, well, when it comes to the 13th Doctor, how could the 13th Doctor work if I was the audience and sitting there watching and I was not comfortable with this new casting choice? How would I get other people interested in it when I was not? Or what about the fact that some people naturally might be like me and they're not too crazy about this casting choice. How would I convince them to like this new doctor? So I th sat down and thought about it and here's what I came up with. Okay, with the 13th doctor, with her being cast, blatantly admit I would have made sure there was no, in any way, shape, or form, negativity directed towards any of the previous actors who played the doctor. Hands down. Would have made it very clear we love the the men who play the doctor. This is just a new idea and we're hoping people will enjoy it. Second of all, I would have made sure not to act like this was anything new since it was not. We've already had female Time Lords on the show before. We even already had a woman or female Time Lord, a Time Lady, who was once a man. So I would not be stuck on my high horse acting like this was revolutionary or this was new. This is just another element being added to the show. That's what I would pass it off as. When it comes to the actual characterization, characterization sorry guys, with the actual characterization, what would I do? And here's what I thought. My first thought was, okay, with the 13th Doctor being a woman, I need to give, there has to be a feeling of balance still being in the Force. And what I mean by balance in the Force is, I mean that there has to be a feeling of consistency in the show that still makes people who might be uncomfortable with this want to be interested in this. So for me, I would never have given the uh, you know the 13th doctor three human companions i would not have even given them three companions who are human at all or even one companion was human just not not at all what i would have done was at some way in some way shape or form have the 13th doctor immediately get sucked get literally pulled back to gallifrey summoned back there and then the time lords they decide to have the doctor break in a new companion because there's there's a time lord here who they feel can be redeemed and they want to see if they can and they're going to throw it onto the doctor and that first one was for me the idea of who they should give a doctor as a companion the time meddler the meddling monk the meddling monk is still technically around and he's still a male and he decide, they decide to pair him off with a doctor or maybe because they have a reason why they want those two to be paired together they might have something that the they need them to go get or an adventure that they need them to undergo either way we have the doctor being a female but we have an established male time lord also traveling with her at the same time to give us balance also those people were not that interested in the idea of Jodie Whittaker as doctor or the doctor being a female they now have this male character from the classic show who was a male and is still a male to give again balance get and the only way you can see the return of the meddling monk is to watch series 11 so if you miss the meddling monk you want to see him again the only way you can see him is to watch doctor who series 11. Aha! 
that's how you can get people back. But then, I admit my first impulse was to say, oh no, do not bring back after that. Like, after I had that first impulse, that first thought, my second impulse would be, no, don't bring back the meddling monk, because I'd be worried that some writer or some, like, higher-ups would try and force us to put a PC SJW take on him where he's not allowed to be competent in any way, shape, or form, or not allowed to have any valid points, and he's just there to make the 13th Doctor look good. Bam! So I was like, never mind, that might not be a good idea because somebody could possibly ruin the monk. So I said, what would be my next idea? My next idea, actually, after that was, well, still the idea of a male companion of who is a Time Lord. So, yes, the 13th Doctor does get a companion again, but again, it's from Gallifrey, where the Doctor is assigned a male companion like the fourth doctor was assigned Romana, now it's the reverse. It's a female doctor being assigned a male companion from Gallifrey. And it's another Time Lord, and I named him, either gave him either two names. Either I gave him the Traveler, or I gave him the Experimentalist, and he said, call me the Mentalist, for short. Either way, this is not going to be a... Time Lord, who just always has been at Gallifrey, has had no adventures of his own. Oh no. The reason why he's there is because he actually is a certified time traveler. He didn't steal a box and run away. No, he was able to get permission from the Time Lords to let him travel throughout the universe so he could observe things and report back to them. So what it is, is the Time Lords giving the Doctor the traveler or the experimentalist because the traveler or the experimentalist will help the doctor be able to reimmerse himself or reintegrate himself back into or reintegrate herself back into Time Lord society. It's about trying to rehabilitate the doctor but what happens? The traveler or the experimentalist and the doctor travel together and they both run rub off on each other but both of them since they both are travelers and they both have probably experienced danger they both are equally smart and equally capable but equally can make mistakes and be flawed. So my third reason that I thought oh this would be a very good idea is okay if they want to go or they're worried about just like the a man still here god how it's awful. Okay have the experimentalist or the traveler have been initially a female, yeah, a time lady, who every now and again, her incarnation turns into a man. Or have it still been initially born a male time lord, but every now and again, he becomes female and his previous incarnation was a female, but now he's a man again. And here's what makes that compelling. So you have the doctor, a male who is now a female and then you have a another time lord on there who is a male but has had experiences being a female before but he is back to being a male again or he's a male after being female for so long both shows how it can go in both directions giving equality to both bringing balance to the force but also something i thought would be very good was if you had this male time lord who is traveling with this recently regenerated time lady but here's the thing, the 13th Doctor, maybe he's going through a growth process and doesn't like the change. She does not like the fact that she's a woman now when she used to be a man. Maybe instead of having it just, she lands, she's a woman, and she's, the Doctor is perfectly okay with being a woman, have it be, this change is not something I am used to. I internally I feel completely different internally and externally I feel like people look at me differently and maybe the doctor has a, a feeling of being uncomfortable in her own skin because this is not what she's used to and this male time lord who has been a woman before or was originally was a woman and now is a man is doing his best to help her with the transition so we see a woman who was once a man a the 13th Doctor, who was initially a male character, now realizing that being a female is not just easy to walk in the park, I can easily be a female after being a male. No, it's not the same thing. And I'm, you're going to feel different about yourself because you are different. And maybe the Doctor is not that crazy about this new change. It adds a level of doubt to the Doctor that would be refreshing to watch. And it is also is a journey, an emotional journey for the 13th Doctor. But here's why I also thought it would be a very good idea. 
even though I'm pretty sure that Jodie Whittaker, Chibnall, and Eccleston, or all the other people writing for that her character think it's a terrible idea, I think it's good. Because it also forces the 13th Doctor to confront all of the questions and doubts that we as an audience had when we saw her get cast. So those up at the BBC who think, how dare you do that? How dare you, like, this will make her look weak. How dare you show anything else but her accepting it immedi immediately and being an incredibly strong woman from the very beginning. Strength of us women is like strength of men. It's not about us being perfect all the time. It's from us doubting ourselves, feeling our imperfections, or feeling something in inadequate inside of us, sorry, inside of us, rolling out of it, recovering, dusting ourselves off, and overcoming it. But if you didn't have anything to overcome to begin with when it comes to something like this, it's not going to be as compelling as having something to overcome in situations like this. And what the doctor needs with this situation is the doctor needs to doubt herself, to doubt her own, you know, this new gender change. Why? Because by doubting it, she confronts and verbally confronts the doubts of the audience. I got this from a man. When I say from a man, what I mean is, I got this, if you're thinking that this is me showing how women women are not equal to men. No, I'm showing how we women are equal to men. Because I got this idea from one of my favorite doctors, Patrick Troughton, the second doctor. When William Hartnell regenerated into Patrick Troughton, while he is regenerating, he does not call himself the doctor. I mean, not regenerating. After he regenerated, he did not immediately call himself the doctor. He was in a state of indecision about what he fully was. But also, Ben doubted him. Ben verbally doubted that this was the doctor. He just could not accept it really well. But also, on top of that, there were times where the doctor did not make the best decisions. Like when Polly might have been in danger because she was captured, the doctor was not going to sound any alarms. Ben grabs him and says, I don't care if we look like idiots. We're going to report this. The Ben doubted the doctor. Because Ben doubted the doctor, he was the voice of the doctor. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. He represented, he was like a conduit for being a voice for what the audience was going through. The audiences were seeing this person for the first time play a character they had been used to for three years. They were going to be dubious. They were going to be doubtful. By having Ben be their voice, it forced the doctor to confront the things, to his face, confront the things that we were feeling and we were asking in that situation back in 1966. So by having the doctor, the 13th doctor, doubt herself or be uncomfortable with this change, she's going herself, she's going through the same growth, the same development of character that we, the audience, are going through in seeing her. We are literally becoming her in that circumstance. But that's not what happened. She was right off the bat, perfectly fine with it. She's perfect as she is. End of story. Everybody just follows and connects to her immediately. Okay. I'm okay with that working with the companion sometimes because oftentimes the companion is like that when the doctor's in a bad state. So the doctor needs someone like that. But with, for the doctor himself, no, the doctor has a darkness to him. We need to see the darkness every now and again and the doctor confront the darkness. He confronts the beast or she confronts the beast inside of herself. And by confronting the beast, they rise above the beast. Because the 13th Doctor never confronted this change of herself in a much more what the heck is this way. We could not fully feel resolution ourselves probably because it was never confronted in the context of the show. Like it for once was with the great change of William into Patrick. That's just my thoughts. Okay, so guys, what do you think about this? Again, I know this is not like a perfect theory or I just was having fun with what would I do if I was forced to be in this situation? How would I approach it? What would I do? And this is all I could come up with. What would you do? What do you feel? Let me know in the comment section. And also, yes, it's still going to be the other video I'm doing on the 13th Doctor, just preparing you guys now. There was something I discovered about the 13th Doctor um, that I just... I mean, a revelation I arrived at that it was like, oh, another thing I don't like about this situation we are in now. But I'll do that video later. Just letting you know now it's coming out eventually. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Your audience, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. I love you guys.
Bye, guys.